Yeah. Somebody doesn't mind to yell out there and have them come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> come on in. Praise God. Praise God. Get in here. We're we'll locking the doors. They're coming. Come on in. Joey would say, it's about time. <laughs> it's all right. We got started late because of Janet, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, beloveds, now that everybody is all comfortable and in their seats, why don't we go ahead and stand up? <laughs> we'll open up in prayer. We always open up in the Lord's Prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, who would like to start us out? Our Father. Lord in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the last kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Great Amen. job. Give yourself a hand. Y'all sound really good. Yeah. All right, so today uh, we are starting all over. So we're starting in step one in I Am Recovered, which is identity, and step one in My Beloved, which is intimacy. Okay, so if you have the little black book, it's identity. If you have the beloved book, it's intimacy. And whichever book you have, they all just run in together. They just all flow together. That's just how Holy Spirit works. So I'm going to start off in the I Am Recovered book. Um, it's 65 in my book. I don't know what is on the little book, but it's 65 in my book. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm sorry, I don't have any place to put my other microphone, so this is what we're going to do today. Here we go. I am. I understand that I have a relationship with God is to receive Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I embrace the fellowship with Holy Spirit and who Jesus Christ, my Lord, paid for. Holy Spirit who rests upon my Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, Ooh. Holy Spirit, who Jesus Christ, our Lord, preached, taught, and demonstrated for us in the perfect relationship with Father God through Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I lay down my prideful heart, my free will, my right, my pride, and ask God never to allow me to hurt Holy Spirit and for God to be God of my life. He lives through me for eternity. Amen. 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 So, Lord Jesus Christ himself, Lord Jesus Christ himself had Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Many people, when you first get saved, or if you don't know, or some places teach that it's all Lord Jesus Christ because he's the Son of God. But Jesus left his divinity in heaven and came here. He lowered himself to be absolutely nothing. But he does that for many reasons, but one is to show us how we are to live. And how he did it is how we do it. So how he did it was Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Right. It's the power of Holy Spirit. And if you have received Lord Jesus Christ, we have that same power. Amen? Amen. 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 So when you read the Bible and you see what Lord Jesus Christ did, go ahead. You clap for that. That's your yeah. <laughs> That's what you're about, Jesus. Amen? So you see what Lord Jesus Christ did. We, as his beloved children can do the same things. Amen. Not us. Holy Spirit in us. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. So, <clears throat> grateful. <laughs> Relationship with God is only through Lord Jesus Christ. God, through love, who is Jesus Christ, as Lord of our heart, communicated to us through His grace, who is Holy Spirit, to produce fruit in our lives, the promise of our Lord made, the promise of our Lord was made through Holy Spirit, who God sent, who then works through us. Okay? So, the promise that Lord Jesus Christ gave to us was Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. His grace is within us. Amen? Amen? And because of Holy Spirit, we are supposed to produce Holy Spirit fruit. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. This is who we are. Whether you feel like this is who you are, whether you understand this is who you are, this is who we are. Amen. If we have Lord Jesus Christ, this is who we are. Amen? Amen. Okay. 
So, he says, his children through a perfect relationship and Holy Spirit so that we may have abundancy through him. Amen? To live abundant lives through him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, give yourself completely over to God. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Amen. Now what? God moved into your heart. You died with Jesus Christ on that cross. And God rose you from the dead through the power of Holy Spirit. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Give yourself completely over to God. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Yes. Amen. Amen. So now what? God moved into your heart. You died with Jesus Christ on that cross. And God rose you from the dead through the power of Holy Spirit. You are now a resurrected child of God, sealed with Holy Spirit. Say, that's me. That's me. All right. We're just getting into this. This is our identity. That's who I am. Okay. So intimacy. All right, intimacy. As I look upon an eagle of the sky, there is no wonder why. No matter how hard I try, every tear you've read through every cry. As I look upon the eagle of the sky, as I watch an eagle soar, I can hear the, fa the false lion roar. Even though every muscle in me may be sore, I know I can trust you forevermore. For you silence every enemy's war. As I focus on the eagle's flight, I know that you're the only one right. That all I can do is love you with all my might. Because in this focus, our bond is tight. For I know for eternity, I am in your sight. Amen? Amen. Okay, so what is identity? What is identity? So if I was to ask you, who are you, what would you say? Child of God. Child of God. Child of God. Amen. Amen? Was it always that case? No. Yeah. For you. Was it always that case? You knew that from the beginning that you were beloved child of God. Huh? You're right. We always were. They're overachievers over here. We always were. But did you know it? Nope. Did you know who you were? See, even Lord Jesus Christ had to come to the knowledge of who he was. See, he shows us how to do everything, which is amazing. He had to come to the knowledge of who he was. Now, he had a great start. Because he had a wonderful mother. He had angels all around, right? Holy Spirit was, was upon him, right? He had a great start, amen? So even if we didn't have parents that told us who we were, whether we knew it or not, he was always there. Amen. amen. The angels were always all around. <laughs> and he was always calling to us. Amen? amen? It just took us a while to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So as for me, when, when I was a child, I, I grew up great. My parents are wonderful, loving, kind, good. Uh, my mom did take us to church when we were little. I didn't get anything. Not a single thing. Nothing. Didn't know a single Bible story, anything. But when I turned 12, something happened. It's like a light switch went off. Something happened and everything changed. I, I, I thought that people were basically good people and that the world was basically a good, fun place to be. But at age 12, it just all turned. At age 12, well, I'll just start from this. I started, hmm, I started doing what I call dieting. So when I was 12, I asked my mom, these kids were making fun of me because I was chubby. So I asked my mom, like, how do you lose weight? So she gave me a mom answer. And this is what she said. She goes, if you do more chores around the house, you'll lose weight. <laughs> a mom answer, right? But I was getting beaten up. I was getting made fun of. And I had always been thin all my life, but all my life, 12, right? But I never experienced anything like this. And so in my child mind, I said, okay, if I eat, you gain weight. So if you don't eat, then you'll lose weight. Hmm. So that's exactly what I did for years. Years. So I would go for as many days, as weeks as I could, and then I would eat two chocolate chip cookies, 12 years old, and a Diet Coke that was my mom's in the fridge. That's what I would eat. And then I told myself, okay, I have to start all over again. 
and then, right? So I have parents, so I have to lie and fake things. You know, make a sandwich and take off the crusts and leave it in the sink, even though I know I'm going to get in trouble because the dishes in the sink, just so they can think that I'm eating. Yeah. Right? And then, um, <laughs> so the whole thing about being um, a vegetarian or a vegan started because of this. I saw something about Michael Jackson was a vegan. <laughs> so if I told my parents, well, I'm not going to eat, which I love animals. And so I told my parents, I'm not going to eat because it's an animal and I'm going to be vegan. But the truth is, I wasn't eating anything. And I did that for years. So uh, even though I didn't realize it, as a 12-year-old child, I was killing myself. But something incredible happens after you go so long without eating, dopamine gets released in your brain. Same thing as doing drugs. Is drinking alcohol. There are days where I literally thought I could fly. Wow. That if I went and jumped off that roof, I wouldn't die. Felt like I was invincible. 12 years old. Basically doing drugs. Killing myself. Which was awesome because it's excruciatingly painful to die from not eating. I didn't know I was killing myself. I just thought I was losing weight. All right, so moving on. Um, by the time I was 16 years old, um, I had been raped by my first boyfriend. Um, to say that I was naive is, is an understatement, but my parents never let anybody come over to the house unless it was organized and planned and they were gonna be there. So he was not supposed to be there, but I invited him over to the house anyway because he gave me a ride home so I didn't have to drive the bus. And, um, he took advantage of the situation and raped me in my own house in my own bed. I weighed maybe 89 pounds, I'm sorry, 98 pounds, and I couldn't fight him off. But every day I had to be in my house and I had to sleep in my bed and I didn't know how to tell my parents, so I didn't. And, uh, Things just got worse from there. And this is gonna sound so crazy and so messed up, but it's the truth. I found friends at school who wanted to help me. They saw that I wasn't who I used to be. I didn't act like it. They wanna know what's going on. And um, so they took me out drinking. Now, of course, we were teenage girls, so it was like wine coolers. That's how it starts, right? But then you get up to the to the big stuff. But it's actually, believe it or not, sorry, this is so messed up, but drinking alcohol is actually what saved me from killing myself. Wow. From starving myself. <laughs> because <laughs> when you're drunk and it's three o'clock in the morning, yeah. right? You're going somewhere to eat. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> See how messed up that is? But it's true. <clears throat> And because I didn't know how to deal with being raped and I, I couldn't tell my mom and and I'm just gonna tell you, I'll just confess, I, I was messed up. Messed up. I didn't know what to do. My whole life just shattered. I generally thought people were good and life was good and everybody had a life like I had at my house and and found out that that wasn't true at all. And um, from there I started drinking, yes. Um, but I also became very suicidal. I tried to kill myself several times in many different ways. Um, I would even drive at night with the lights off down the street hoping somebody would just hit me without any concern of anybody else. Um, there were nights where I slept next to a gun hoping that I would shoot myself. Um, I laugh because it was a rifle and I couldn't reach it. <laughs> But I didn't know that. Um, I slept with a knife under my bed, under my pillow, so I don't know. I tried to do many different things. I know I asked you all one, one night when you all were here if, how many people should have died or did die 
right, and came back because there's no coincidences that we're all here together. Right. There, there's, there's, it's not just luck that we were born during this time when Christ is, is coming back. Come on, right. Amen. There, Amen. There's no coincidence that there's that um, addiction, whether drugs or alcohol, is just rampant. Amen. Amen. We've, we've never had, we've never had all these facilities. Amen. Yeah. And like art holds 500 and some people, right? Yeah. Amen. There's no coincidence that the enemy is moving. Amen. Yeah trying to take us out so that we don't do what we're supposed to be Amen. called to do. Amen? Amen? So the reason why I tell you all this story to share a little bit about me is I found my identity in all those things. Yeah. I found my identity in what my friend said, so I chose to lose weight. I found my identity in that weight loss because I couldn't make myself eat. Whenever I would look in the mirror, I'd still see that fat little kid and didn't want to get beat up. It didn't matter how, how small. I found my identity in my friends who introduced me to alcohol. And then I found my identity in alcohol. Because, man, when you drink, everything else goes away, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. For a little while. Until you start doing and having things done to you that were worse than what happened in the first place when you start drinking or do drugs, right? And that torment, all those visions when you close your eyes of all the things that have happened, reaching for something. I just didn't know it was God. I just didn't know. So my identity was in all those things, not knowing that every single one of them would try to take me out. Not knowing heaven or hell, God or Satan, even though I had gone to church, I didn't know any of those things. Say it with me, but God. But God. Pastor, um, if y'all don't know, he's my husband. Um, he's not here tonight, but asked for prayer, yes. so please keep him in prayer. Um, he got very sick and ended up in the hospital. He had four surgeries in three months. Um, at that time, um, we were both alcoholics. <laughs> there was a store down the street from us that was um, where we would just get boxes of boxes of bottles of wine. And somehow they would all just disappear. <laughs> we, we were, yeah. And, uh, but he ended up very ill, very sick, and was in the hospital. And um, on the last surgery, they told him, we just don't, we don't know how to help you. We don't know really what's wrong, but you need to keep coming and we're gonna do this for surgery where every time he had a surgery, he got worse and worse. Wow. He had no quality of life. He just laid on the couch in the basement, but he had no quality of life. He was completely sick all the time and in pain all the time. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't stand, he couldn't sit. He was completely miserable. And I, I joke and I tell you that if he was an animal, I would have put him to sleep. Mm -hmm because that was the only humane thing to do. But it was because he was in the hospitals, because he was going through, through the things he was going through, I got angry. I got mad. And I walked through the hospital while he was in surgery, just waiting for somebody to say something to me. Because I just needed to at somebody. And then I saw it. I saw the little sign that said chapel. Amen? Amen? But I was not going there to pray. Amen. I was going to go tell him off. <laughs> See, when we first got together, he asked me about God. And I said, no. If, if God was real, then all these things that happened wouldn't have happened. Again, not knowing him. And I blamed him. Amen. <laughs> right? Amen. So I went to that chapel to go tell him off. And as I did, I walked to that chapel and I grabbed that handle and boom! <laughs> this, I mean, like a sonic boom just hit. I was in three different pieces oh, wow. in the air and I met God. I saw God. Hallelujah. I saw him. I saw him. And I don't know how long I was there. 
It was very much an out-of-body experience. I could see what's happening, but that's me. That's just what it was. And when I came to myself and I was on the floor and I was just bawling, because I was standing in the love and peace of God, something I've never known even existed. Amen. Amen. And all my life being, you know, my, my parents' children or my identity and, and what I look like or how big or how skinny or, you know, if my friends like me or an alcohol and the things that happen or what kind of job or whatever, my identity was in all that junk. Yeah. You know what? On the bottom of that floor, on my knees crying out to God, none of that mattered. For the first time in my life, my identity wasn't in any of those things. Amen. Amen. Praise my God. identity Praise at that moment and forevermore would be a beloved child of God. Right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, it's almost seven. I know you're all stories aren't exactly like my stories, but we're all similar in certain ways. Amen. And for most of us, it took getting to the extreme before turning that corner. Right. Amen? Yeah. And so pastor, he loves to say this, and a lot of our ministers, when we go out to the Isaiah houses and, and to the ark, <laughs> is we're all inners. <laughs> we are all in. Amen? Yeah. We're going, and we're doing everything, and going as fast and hard. Right? There was nothing keeping me from drinking. We drank all the time. I drank before school. Amen? After school. <laughs> I don't even think I went to school in my senior year. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, you know. Preach, yeah. <laughs> but you know, that was Saul before he became Paul. Mm. Amen. He was a murderer. Murdering Christians. But God said, go get him. Because yeah. I chose him. Amen. 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 And that's exactly what he said to all of us. Amen. In all my brokenness, in all my junk, he said, I choose you, sweetheart. Come on. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. All right, so. We've got just a couple minutes. Okay, so. I had a very intimate moment. <clears throat> Amen? With, with God. But at some point, I had to get up off that floor. Amen? And then go carry on with my life. So after that, Pastor and I did go to, um, somebody invited us to go to this church, and I call it the craziest church I've ever been to. It's a Pentecostal church. <laughs> I'd never been in a Pentecostal church. I'd been in a Southern Baptist church. Wow. I had no idea what we were in for. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. I mean, to me, it looked like a circus. It looked like people hanging from the chandelier. I mean, and just like, woo! I mean, they didn't have a choir. No. They didn't have a little old lady playing an organ. No, they had a band. Amen. Somebody was playing drums and a guitar, and I just sat there like this. <laughs> right? We didn't, we, um, they didn't have pews. They had those fold-out metal chairs, you know, those lovely things. Right? And so I was already just, just, you know, right? But that's the place. That's the place God had us go. That's the place he led us to. And the wonderful thing about this Pentecostal church that I'd never heard before was Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I saw the movement of Holy Spirit in this church. It was completely foreign to me. I heard people just speaking in tongues, like, what's that about? Right? People prophesying. I'm like, is that the pastor? Crazy stuff. But I saw the move of Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And it wasn't by coincidence. God put us there. Amen. We got saved in that church. Amen. 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 But this is what Holy Spirit wanted me. This is what he wants to get across. When we got saved, we both went down front same day. Same people prayed over us. But pastor laid everything down. Now, I'd never heard that word before. Completely Christianese. I didn't understand. And even as I'm, I mean, I just want God at this point. Yeah. Amen. I am all in. Amen. I met him. I'm all in. Amen. Amen. 
But as I saw my beloved get up off the floor, he was speaking in tongues, and he was different. He was just different. I wasn't there. I had this amazing experience in the hospital. I hit my knees. I was, I mean, you know, I mean, it's something out of a movie. And I knew God, and I felt God, and I heard him. But something was different between the two of us. And I'll tell you what it was. In the back of my mind, I'm like, are you still there? I don't know how to live without you. And I wasn't talking to God. I was talking to alcohol. I didn't understand it was a demon or a thing or a principality, whatever. I didn't know that. But I didn't know how to live my life without alcohol. It had been years, years, years after this point. I didn't know how to talk to somebody without alcohol in me. And guess what? He was still there. Mm -hmm. Pastor didn't have it, but I did. Because I didn't want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I didn't, but I didn't. Because the first thing I asked was, where are you? Not talking to the Holy Spirit. Talking to this thing. And it made sure that I knew that it was still with me. Now, Pastor and I made a um, pact on that day. We said, we're never drinking again. And I agree. And I'm like, how is this going to be? Because it's right here with me. And this is what Holy Spirit said to me. He said, you can drink, but you're going to have to hide it from your husband. You're going to have to leave the house and go somewhere else. Because you're not going to bring it into this place. He said, is that the person you really want to be? And I said, no. He said, it's time to get baptized. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the next week, we got baptized. Amen. And this time, this time, I chose to let it go. <laughs> and beloveds, when I came up out of that water for the first time ever, no more torment. Amen. Amen. It had been there for years. Amen. And no more torment. Amen. And from that day on, Father himself, Holy Spirit himself, Lord Jesus, taught me how to have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Just talk to me. Amen. Just talk to me. Amen. Because it was through that intimacy that led us to, to be there. We heard his voice. We went. Even if we didn't understand that was him, we heard his voice and we went. Amen. I think that's all I got. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Okay. Well, I turned it off. Okay. So, um, the guys, you all are going to stay in here. Because there's a whole bunch of you. So, women, we're going to go um, back in the back. Okay? So, the question is, the question is, right? <laughs> what was your identity in before? Just like me, I had many of them. Amen? What was your identity in before? And we always, always want to live, leave on a gooder and gooder note, so where's your identity now? Amen? Amen, Amen. 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 below to God? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go.